Hey guys, welcome back. BDCKR here. We're back with uh, our weekly recap of all things Injustice. This is for the week of November 25th, 2021. The current character challenge is Blackest Night Batman. That is a one-week repeat. And the required characters for that are Catwoman, Nightwing, and Joker, who are bronze, bronze, and silver, respectively, if you're looking at the lowest tier to get them. Mm -hmm. So pretty good for newer players. Um, obviously, you need to have, you know, usually at least a gold card to get through anyways. Right. Um... And if you have that, it, you're not too far off having all these right. characters. Just the regular difficulty, yeah. Yeah. Uh, his passive is Surging Darkness, which is Batman deals more damage as his opponent's health depletes. And Blackest Knight characters receive an additional 10% unblockable chance for each Blackest Knight member on their team. He's got 1,250 attack and 1,000 health. Was last available on the 28th of January 2021, so been almost a full year. Mm. Uh, and yeah, he's yeah. got pretty medium high stats he actually got a buff he's one of the few characters who received a buff he used to have a little lower yeah um and he also had a passive change when he was buffed yes it was changed and it was improved they added another feature so the part of dealing more damage is his opponent's health depletes so for every one percent of his enemy's health it's down Batman does 1% more damage. Yeah, which is pretty good, actually, yeah. on the balance. And his attack, which is now a 1250, used to be 1,000. And his health, which is now 1,000, used to be 800. Mm -hmm. Which just gives you a sense of how bad he used to be. Because along with that, he only had one passive where he would have boosted damage <laughs> overnight. Right? So that's, that's weird. weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he didn't have a teammate passive, and that made sense mainly because there were no other Blackest Night characters at the time when he was released. Um, and, and overnight means like between midnight and six in the morning, yeah, based on your clock. A twenty percent damage boost, which is weird because it seems like they're actually actively advocating for you to do sort of that like unhealthy time to be playing. Yeah, right. Not that it's the worst necessarily, but for, for most people, midnight to 6 a.m. Right. is a time that you should probably be sleeping right. if you're on a normal daily schedule. Right. And if you're up in those hours, otherwise, you are probably either on a night shift or, you know, just, I guess, a night owl, but yeah. it's weird. And so I guess before there was gear, 20% boost was not bad considering there's no other way to boost it. Uh, but with gear and with the newer characters, he was, he was lagging. And I think they needed to do this to make him usable. I wish they would do that with more of the characters. Yeah. Um, and the way the, the teammate passive works is that you can have... He counts as his own Blackest Knight teammate. So you can have a 30% unblockable chance on all attacks. Not just basics. Specials too. Mm -hmm. If you have a full Blackest Knight team. And that's pretty good because let's say for Batman at least, his special one, multiple hits. Almost guaranteed that one of them is going to hit and you're going to be... Uh, doing some significant damage. Yeah, thirty percent across everything is pretty high. Yeah, yeah. I, I think out of the Blackest Knight characters, Batman and Flash are the most important ones to have on a Blackest Knight team for the offensive potential. And adding Hawkgirl basically doubles the toughness of these two cards. So I think that really is the ideal Blackest Knight team makeup. Mm -hmm. So thirty-six weeks in a row that the characters have been following the same pattern that originally showed up May twenty twenty. If the pattern holds. Next week is going to be Dawn of Justice Wonder Woman, and we've got some corroboration in the store for that. And the week after that is should be Arkham Knight Batgirl. Yeah, so there we go. This week's multiplayer reward is Nightwing's Ninjato, which becomes the Brandish Ninjato. And when it's fully maxed out, it gives you the abilities retarget 90% of enemy uh, area of effect damage to wielder of this item with 50% damage absorb, 40% uh, max health increase, uh, a Nightwing specific ability, which is reflect 16% damage, and the evolved ability, which is give 300% of received uh, AoE damage as power. It was last available on the uh, 22nd of April, 2021. Uh, so it's the 47th week in a row of following the rewards cycle overall. Right. I think we don't need to maybe mention <clears throat> the specific, like. Well, when you say 47, right, there's different ways of thinking about it, but there's 31 rewards. We had a full sequence of 31. And now it's 16 in a row of repeating that original, that the complete cycle. Yeah, and next week we should see Riddler's Cane, which becomes Riddler's Staff. Right, right. And I know I know, people really like this gear because I see it so much on metal teams. And I see it specifically on Batman Ninja Nightwing, which makes sense because there is a Nightwing-specific ability, which is reflecting the damage. Yeah. Um, so given... 
how we gear our teams. We love our teams to be uh, offensive. So it's hard to find a use for it because it's really a, a defensive team. And to be the best defensive team uh, gear, you, you, you to get the most out of it, you need to be facing somebody who does splash damage because it gives you a ton of power. Yeah. Uh, and the synergy is great, right? So 90% of splash damage gets pulled onto the character holding Ninjato. And 50% of that gets dissipated, meaning that you're taking the splash damage, you're pulling 90% away from your teammates, so they only get hit with 10% of the original splash damage. Mm-hmm. And the person who's holding Ninjato gets half of that 90%, which is 45, in addition to um, the original special damage, if they happen to be facing the person who's doing splash. Mm-hmm. Uh, 40% boosted health means they have a better chance of surviving the special and the splash damage, right? So you're taking more damage, but you've also got more health to absorb it. And the kicker is 300% of received splash becomes power. And just like Phantom Zone, the requirement to do, you know, power drain, whatever, right? Like yeah. I, I have no idea what units they use to judge it. Um, but I've seen someone with a Nijato coming in with a full three bars when I'm playing with the Flashpoint team and do a bunch of splash with Deathstroke. So mm. it's definitely significant. Um, damage reflection is good, but 16% is, it's not a lot in most cases, except for the secondary effect of damage reflection, which is you're doing damage. Yeah. You're generating power if you're holding the Ninjato. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. Um, the the biggest splash damage potential cards, I think, are Lucha Bane and any of the Batgirls. Yeah. And... Uh, I, I think the way we normally fight, they don't really hit us that often with like a, the full splash. So it doesn't seem like it's worth it for us at least to s- use up one of our nine gear slots to have this on on a character. Mm-hmm. Um, so when when we face that for our Flashpoint team, so we see that they generate a huge amount of power, but it's still not enough to actually uh, change the tide of the fight. Yeah. Um, so, so here's the interesting thing, though, that I, I do want to point out that it may not be obvious to everybody. If you're facing the person with the Ninjato, and you've got Master's Death card, and they happen to be Nightwing, there's a real funky kind of weird effect to almost synergy, right? So after tagging in uh, with Master's Death card, I should just do a quick recap, right? Uh, blocking is 20% less damage, but the important parts are 100% area effect. Uh, opponent's team takes 15% damage from your special attacks, but it does it in a funny way where it does it ticking a little bit over time instead yeah. of all at once. Um, combo ender effect, I don't care about, but the other part that makes a difference is 20% unblockable damage on Tagging, which is a bunch of hits on the opponent that generates power for you, and it gives you about one bar, even though it doesn't say that in the abilities. And the area effect, because it comes as a bunch of little hits, um, on the opponents, when you tag in... Okay, so here's the thing. You get power for every one of those hits that count as you hitting them. If they're Nightwing with the Ninjato and reflecting damage, they get power too because they're reflecting the hits onto you. Yeah. And you get a small amount of power from getting hit even though it favors the doing the damage. So you still you boost your damage when you tag in a little bit more on top of that. Yeah. And then on top of that, if you do a special... The person holding the Jato, the opponent, um, they get power from reflecting special damage. Yeah. They get power from the splash damage because the off-screen opponents are taking splash damage. Yeah. It gets redirected to the Ninjato holder. Um, and the that's not, on top of that, yeah. that splash damage gets converted to power too, in addition to hitting you because it both hits you and generates power. Yeah, so they're, they're getting a bunch of power. So that's why when you... Um, they, they, when you do something like that, splash damage, they build it up huge. So you got to really make it count because um, they're you're doing a little bit of extra damage to them because of the Ninjato's ability. And if it's enough and you knock them out, then it doesn't matter that you gave them three bars of power just now. But if you don't, you're in big trouble. Yeah, because they have a huge amount of power. Yeah. And they've also just done a little bit of damage to you. They've softened you up a yeah. bit with the reflection. Yeah. So even though I prefer offensive gear I, I have to you know acknowledge that i think when you face this gear on the metal nightwing there is a real potential for a shift a little bit of a beat down on you yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah so there we go 
Um, moving on to the store, we have the Dawn of Justice Wonder Woman pack. Uh, that's our best, you know, our second best hint, other than uh, also following the pattern that we're expecting to see Dawn of Justice Wonder Woman yeah. as a challenge next week. Uh, it's twenty four ninety nine Canadian. It was twenty six ninety nine Canadian in January twenty twenty one. Uh, so, you know, as always, the price fluctuates, but not by yeah. enough to make it a good deal or a bad yeah. deal, just yeah. enough to keep it solidly in that not good deal yeah. uh, range. It uh, doesn't come with any credits, and you don't get the Dawn of Justice gear, which is the Wonder Woman's Lasso of Truth. You get the regular gear for um, Wonder Woman, which is the Amazonian Sword and Shield. Which kind of sucks. Yeah. But I suspect that when she comes next week, like she has for previous... Um, the challenges mm -hmm. that you'll on the nightmare level you you can get her signature gear as the lasso instead of that mm -hmm. we also have the character bundle battle of themiskyra or themisira them mm -hmm. something uh and that's also 24.99 uh and was also 26.99 in december of 2020 and that comes with aries and dawn of justice wonder woman which is weird for again now they've put in two packs where you can pay for her when yeah, you likely she's at the same next time. Week. Yeah. Uh, and one of them, which is, I think the Aries one is better. It's, it's depend if you need Aries, I guess it's a better deal. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you look at it, you get the three support cards, right? That's the only difference. I'd rather tr not get the three support cards, pay the same price and get a multiplayer challenge and yeah. the three and a half star signature gear. And they're, gear yeah 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 yeah, yeah. uh so yeah we oh actually it's better because you're getting her lariat instead of the amazonian sword and shield so this is actually oh wait even it's better, better in every way yeah, you get more gear you get the rarer gear you get more characters and it's the exact same price support cards are and support cards are cheap yeah support cards aren't really worth anything in my opinion yeah. Yeah. uh once you get past the early early yeah. early game yeah so anyways way better deal actually yeah. straight up uh the metropolis pack is hanging around for a second week the most wanted pack is hanging around for a seventh week, so that might be, you know, a permanent fixture. Interesting and, precedent. Uh, in terms of the celebration pack, we are seeing the Joker celebration pack. That's in that sort of 300nth medal celebration pack right. rotation. Yeah, and, and that's been a, like a two-week cycle, like a two-week, every time it shifts next, in a couple weeks, we should see the Aquaman, and then after that, it'll be a Shazam pack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our Survivors League of Assassins still uh, until the 1st of December? Mm-hmm. And Phantom Zone is back for two weeks. Yay. Yay. And American Thanksgiving. You know it's American Thanksgiving because we got bonus XP mm -hmm. for the, the, the rest of the weekend. And Fight 62 is still broken. Yep. Uh, last weekend's breakthrough was Hawkgirl, Green Lantern, and Lobo. So this weekend's should be Lex Luthor, Batman, and Doomsday. Link in the description to a Reddit thread with the complete uh, cycle list for breakthrough if you're interested mm -hmm. uh, moving on to the current glitches just remember that every working glitch is explained in full detail not sort of just mentioned in brief here uh, in a playlist that you can reach by clicking the i in the top right corner of this video we also can only talk about stuff for android 9 because that's the only uh, type of device that we use right now uh, so starting with not working glitches, there's nothing for credits that we're willing to endorse or that we're even sure still works. Uh, link to season six, episode nine of our P and Q and C and A and T for us. Uh, if you want to hear us talk more about the one that does or did exist, uh, other stuff that you might want to do that you can't right now, uh, getting repeated past multiplayer season rewards, getting early multiplayer season rewards, uh, getting through the phantom zone supernaturally quickly instead of just normally very fast uh, and then getting the free energy without having to watch the free energy video uh, right. you can't do that you gotta either watch it or right. not get it right so just a, and quick, a few quick words on the glitches that are still in the playlist of current glitches the challenge reset still working confirmed on blackest night batman challenge phantom zone uh, reset also still working same glitch keep that in mind when you're getting rid of progress on one, you're getting rid of progress on the other. Yeah. If you're on a different version of Android, like Android 10, or if you're on iOS, check out the description for some instructions for you yeah. guys to streamline your experience a bit. Or if you're on iOS, yeah. maybe do the glitch. And if we get a few more confirmations, then we're going to remove the iOS ones because th there have been a few people saying that with a recent iOS update, that challenge reset on iOS doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, the AirPlay mode slash refund glitch is still good for resetting any pack or any reward that doesn't require an online connection to redeem. So that's anything other than bot packs or the uh, Phantom Zone Crystal rewards. Uh, time shifting still works for uh, unlimited survivor play and energy recharges. Uh, 
as always, remember to reset your clock back to normal before you just uh, barrel through and play as normal yeah. in like 2035 or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, breakthrough glitch to let you play repeatedly still working. Did you mention that? Oh, I like... no, I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And last but not least, uh, in between the not working and working glitches, the promotion glitch, uh, where you can promote characters that are still locked, has not uh, had the right conditions for years now, but we keep it here on a technicality because we can. Okay. That's it. And this is where we like to give a big thank you to our patrons on Patreon. And that would be Victor Gomez, Console Peasant, and Edwin at the top tier last word. Cinemac and Mohammed Al Shady at the Your Message Here tier. Sean Farrell, Daniel Simonson, Aaron Mall, Michael DeVries, Brandon C., Irvin Ruiz, and Eddie Dew at the credited level. And Chris Wolf, Scarlet Danny, Awesome Gamer 2 for 1, Pavu RS, Gavin Malott, and Isra E at the gratitude level. There we go. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Komoda. Komoda.